You are watching Good Morning Namibia. If you just joined us, welcome. We are continuing with our conversations here on the, this Tuesday edition of the program. Now, Patient Care is a healthcare initiative that began in Namibia and has recently expanded into Nigeria. It is founded to address critical gaps in healthcare quality. Patient Care has worked closely with the Namibian Ministry of Health and Social Services and the World Health Organization, as well as communities to improve accessibility, quality and patient outcomes. This model of collaboration has proven effective to be effective in Namibia and it now aims to make a similar impact in Nigeria by providing essential services tailored to local health care needs. Joining us to share more on this is the co-founder of Patient Care Namibia, that is Jesse Shisea. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Good morning, madam. Mm -hmm. Um, can you please talk to us about, you know, this uh, information, um, uh, I mean, rather this initiative, of course, that is patient care, Namibia, that if for some it's, it's new, new information to them, um, what are its missions and its specific services or programs that define the impact that you've had in Namibia? Right, it's only so much to say. Uh, I'll try to summarize it. Okay. Um, so we launched on the 7th of June, 2024. And... Um, we connect patients to hospitals, doctors, okay. laboratories, pharmacies, mm -hmm. and we've also created something we call a health cover. And um, this health cover is not medical aid, so let's not, you know, many people think it is, but okay. it's really not. It's more in the fintech world. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a new way of insuring the uninsured. So I use the word insurance because that's what people are used to, mm -hmm. right? So what this means is that, um, people that can't afford medical aid or even monthly commitments mm -hmm. can, can jump onto the patient care um, health coverage and um, the platform can then assist them because we have our own doctors, we have our own hospitals and pharmacies on our platform. Okay. Um, some cool features would be consultations with doctors at a hundred Namibian dollars. Um, another one is... A hundred, um, is that per consultation or per month? Per consultation. Okay. Which is about... Uh, I think of actual consultation before patient care is 450 to a few thousands. Um, that's just one of them. Uh, and when we launched, we've launched the, the doctor and customer application. Now we're releasing the pharmacy. And with this pharmacy release, um, we, we entered Nigeria. So from the past week, rather since August, um, we've been working closely with Nigerians to start the process. So we started the KYC um, with the doctors. Uh, we started talking to regulators. We started talking to partners like Access Bank, Flutterwave, Paystack. Um, we've, we've been, we, are in, we are being supported by United, United Nations Development Program, UNDP. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have UN and WHO supporting us. And, um, as of last week, we started to we press the green button, which is now going into Nigeria, where we got the office space, and uh, we started to bring in the doctors. Um, so what this means and why Nigeria is yeah. because um, Nigeria is quite unique in a sense that when you start a business, you must have medical aid. So they call it HMO. Okay. Here we call it medical insurance or medical aid. And... Um, with this, our package fits in uniquely because we have a few cool features in our pack package. I'll start with the business owner. <clears throat> business owners, because they must give medical aid or insurance to the employees, the high risk in this for the business owner, especially an SME or SMME, is that they don't have a lot of money to just lose at any time, right? So it needs to be strategic in a sense that, um, Let's say you're a business owner, you've employed me, and um, you're also a new business owner, mm -hmm. so high risk. Um, but now you have to put me on a monthly medical aid, right? And the risk is that I could leave you at any given time because I'm also young looking for new jobs. Now, because of that mere factor, um, you'd be hesitant to give me some good medical aid. Now, with patient care, you can use our health cover, and if I leave you, um, whatever is left in my benefits that I haven't used and the money I've contributed, 80% of this money then goes back to you, the employer, so that you can give it to the next hire because I've left you. And if I haven't used my medical benefits because I'm also young, um, these medical benefits roll into the next year. <clears throat> so meaning you as my medical employer don't have to 
contribute that much. When I say contribute, it's really pay as what you what you have. You're not doing a monthly com com a monthly commitment or any of that sort. Yeah. You're really um, deciding. Okay, I only have thirty US dollars or fifty US dollars or hundred US dollars in rands. It would be five hundred rands, a thousand rands, two thousand rands. And that's what you'd put in your patient care wallet for this individual. And now this individual can access the doctors and pharmacies and so on and so forth. Yeah. I want us to <coughs> speak about your impact in Namibia. What has your success stories been like that informed you to then obviously branch out into Nigeria, as you said, pressing the green button? Um, so since we've launched in Namibia, we've, uh, we've onboarding the doctors was easy. So we thought it would be complicated and difficult. Um, but in the first month, we found ourselves at 200 doctors plus hmm. on our platform. Um, we've had some difficulties with technology because we've launched our minimum viable product, which is our MVP. And um, you'd obviously find minor glitches, some iOS features not working, some Android features not working. And that's normal in, te in the tech space. So the, what that helped us do is tune our application so that, well, those features, those problems are no longer. Um, those are the, some of the challenges we faced. And some of the success stories are um, you'd find a customer talking to one of our doctors and a lady customer, and because of privacy, um, she doesn't want to go into a consultation room because she's maybe looking for a morning after pill or contraceptive. So then she'd consult the doctor on our platform. The doctor would prescribe this, and then she'd have this all anonymously done for her so she doesn't have to um, go into a, a, a weird area. Another one we found is um, um, more in the therapy side of things. Because this lady worked in a hospital area, she couldn't speak much about what she was going through because it's a medical environment. So she spoke to one of our doctors. Um, we've also learned that our doctors make, can use their money as extra income, so like a side hustle, which is pretty cool. Um, and these stories I'm mentioning, I, don't, I myself don't have the details because when I ask the doctors, they give me like little, very vague information yeah. because of client confidentiality. Mm -hmm. And once we saw this happening and we also saw that doctors are happy on our platform, some doctors are even advertising to use on weekends, um, it gave us con confidence to go into a big market like Nigeria. Yeah. You're talking about, of course, um, technology that is involved here in, in, in this um, patient care. Um, in Namibia's um, healthcare uh, system, or rather, yes, the healthcare system is quite diverse because we have the urban area and the rural area. So how is this balanced? How do you ensure that you are addressing all um, uh, healthcare uh, personnel within the different sectors of um, the regions? given the disparities? In reality, we aren't. We aren't. <laughs> we really aren't. Um, simply because you need internet, firstly, right? Yeah. So you can't, we can't run around saying, hey, rural community, join here, or urban community. The fact is that 82% of Namibians don't have medical aid. That's the fact, right? So we're using our health coverage to try and bring in the uninformed or the, the uninsured market, and we've seen this happening. Um, we've seen people join in. Our medical aides are, are currently looking at partnering up with us as well as we speak. Now, when we look at the rural area, um, we've found that we need to have USSD technology um, to get into the space. Yeah. Uh, we, so we have some rural customers. Those are smart smartphones. Mm -hmm. but not everyone has a smartphone. Even in urban areas, not everyone has a smartphone. So the problem we're facing or the problem we're, we're, we're tackling is not only rural problem or urban problem is both. And... Um, with more uh, technology or, or advancement in our own technology, which is uh, USSD technology, website technology, because currently, right now, it's just an app, Android and iOS. So by creating a web application and also having USSD technology, we can then cater for more individuals. Um, Okay. From what you've seen. Yeah. You earlier on um, <coughs> explained that the reason why you thought to tap into Nigeria is because in order for one to start a business, you need to have medical aid, um, which is one of the reasons that, of course, informed your decision to tap into that market. What informed you, uh, the decision to start in Namibia? I'm Namibian. I have a firm belief that you, you need to start at home. Okay. And if you, can, if you can solve your own problems at home, you can take it outside. Something my mom taught me is... If you, can't, if you can't do it at home, mm -hmm. don't do it in the streets. So um, younger me, when I was a bit naughty, if, <laughs> if I don't drink at home, 
I'm not drinking in the streets. So it's just how I was raised. So if I'm doing it at home, it, it, we need to start in Namibia. And because of because we started in Namibia, we also started seeing, like I mentioned, the medical aids getting involved. Um, whereas Nigeria, it's a, a, a different landscape. You don't really need the medical aids. You can start disrupting immediately. But in the Namibian context, it's it's small, small, small population, uh, skeptical people, very loyal to the products they use. So we started seeing this behavioral pattern, uh, but the problem remains the same. 90%, 97% of Nigerians don't have medical aid. Quite shocking. I mean, Namibia, it's 82%, right? So with that number, with our package, the uninsured start coming into our package and it makes life easier for them as well. Not only that, but Nigerians adopt the product really fast. Um, okay. Namibia, we got 200 in a month of doctors, that is. In Nigeria, 750 doctors in a month. And all we did was one Zoom call. Next thing you know, they're telling each other and they're all starting to join in, which, yeah. which was but quite it, exciting. But it could be an attributed to the population difference. Of course, yeah. of course, definitely a much bigger population. Um, it, it's just a very unique country, yeah. I would say. I've seen, a, I've seen many areas of Africa, but Nigeria is quite unique. Um, with the way people do business, the way people communicate, uh, it's very, very different. Um, so how would the um, patient care, you know, what role would it play in supporting the Namibian uh, government's healthcare priorities? And we can look at policies such as the national quality policy and, and strategy. We've started engaging with ministry. We actually had a, a meeting with them a week ago and um, the conversation seemed very fruitful. Um, so how we'll be supporting them is in the areas that they, 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 the great areas for them. Well, one of our goals is to ensure quality health care for everybody and also to ensure that doctors um, work and earn good, good, good money so they stay in the country. Uh, we don't want our Namibian doctors becoming expats because they want more capital, right? So um, with that, uh, we've started engagements and, and it's looking fruitful for us. All right. I can't say much because uh, nothing is written Concrete. in stone yeah. yet. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, no, it's understood. Yeah. Um, as we conclude our conversation, anything you'd like to add? Um, at this very point, not much. What the audience can do is follow us on our social media, which is really just patient care. Um, the reason for that is because, it's, like I said, we started engaging with medical aids. The conversations are looking great. Um, and in terms of Nigeria, uh, I think Nigeria will be our fastest market okay. for Africa. Um, financially, we'll t we'd see ourselves growing 3x um, compared to Namibia and South Africa. So in terms of revenue and impact, we, we, sh we should be growing much faster in Nigeria, which is pretty exciting for us. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and all the best. Thank you, Pedro. All right. Well, that was a conversation with Jesse Shisea, who is the co-founder of Patient Care Namibia, who have just recently expanded into Nigeria. We will be back. Please stay tuned.